Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing, talented co-host and the producer of the Model Health Show, the one and only Flexitarian, <laughs> because she's flexing, <laughs> Jade it. Harrell. What's up, Jade? Greetings, Sean. I like that. It's like some <laughs> greetings earthling yes. type thing. Nanu, I like that. Nanu. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Would you look at that? I like that. Look how, at it. how are you today? Oh, wow. Today I am cool leaky. Cool leaky? Mm-hmm. What? In tarnation, well, instant breakfast. What is that? Instant bre- That's fantastic. We get these great reviews, and every now and then folks will leave a word. So yeah. they had cool and geeky Ooh. describing our podcast. So well, I, I must be the cool part. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm just okay. joking. Well, just I receive joking. it. You can. I- Pocket protectors unite. Too. I like I'm that. Geeky. Some might say I have not the knowledge, but I'm geeky too. We're making smart cool. We that are is, making that is it the goal. Cool-iki. That is the goal. So say it with me, cooliki. 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 Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. We've oh got an amazing guest on. Yes, sir. And I'm very, very excited about this episode. You know, this is something that I've been wanting to really address on the show for a long time now. And it's something that's so overlooked when it comes to optimizing our health, our well-being, our mental and physical mm-hmm. well-being is addressing our financial health ah. as well. Because one of the biggest stressors, if not the biggest stressor outside of like a catastrophic health event happening is money. Always. Is worrying about money. It's the Up there is the top number one, number two thing for relationship stress and ending relationships. Yeah. And this is something that we really need to talk more about because this is something I, I went to a traditional university, but I wasn't really educated on how to do money. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's something that it takes some education about it. Just kind of like you're thrown out there. Here's five bucks. <laughs> right. You know, you got five. bucks. Go go buy yourself some penny candy and save <laughs> a quarter or whatever. I don't know. But there's something there's right. no real Very training. And I did training. take I took like um there was like a fin- finance 101 kind of thing. Guess what? That was my focus. I almost forgot. You were a finance I have a corporate guy? finance uh, certification as well for my university. All right. Yeah. So yeah. I even, like, I took college level stuff in this, and I still didn't know how to do, <laughs> quote, do money. Oh, yeah. You know, so this is something that I want to bring on uh, some of the best people in the world to, to really talk about the subject matter, but more importantly, somebody who can tie this together, make it all make sense, and why you need to make this a priority mm-hmm. In your life, as far as your health is concerned, and that's what the Model Health Show is all about, is having the best models possible for having health in all areas of our lives. Absolutely. So really excited about that. But before we do part. that, I want to give a shout out to our incredible show sponsor, Thrive Market. Guys, if you're not utilizing Thrive Market, you are really doing yourself a disservice. Mm-hmm. This is like the online. So everybody knows about, especially uh, across our country now, I've been to Whole Foods locations Everywhere. Everywhere. All right. I've seen the best and I've seen the not so best. (laughs) And that's just one chain, but it's kind of the first national organic chain. But outside of that, we also see uh, other different chains popping up. I remember Wild Oats before they bought them up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, but the thing is, and the kind of restraint for us is that it can tend to be a little bit more expensive when you're buying higher, higher quality foods, which is really crazy. It's kind of backwards in our culture because. You know, something like an organic apple is like $2 and you can get two for two cheeseburgers from uh, fast food company X, which is crazy. You know, the government subsidies and just the the economy of, economies of scale and, and the, the demand for the market, right. you know, for that kind of thing. And you shift gears, and you want to do something healthier for yourself and it becomes a challenge because of the price. So these guys have cut out the middleman. They went direct to the best brands in the world, non-GMO gluten-free, paleo, whatever you're looking for, vegan, the different types of uh, things, that commodities that we're looking for specifically, and they've got the best brands. They've done the homework for you because that's another thing that costs a lot of money is figuring out what stuff is the best, <laughs> right? right? Do and they have the real ingredients? <laughs> exactly, right? And so they've done that homework, and they've got it all available for mm-hmm. you at Thrive Market. So Love go it. to thrivemarket.com forward slash model health. You're going to get 25% off your first purchase, free shipping, and a free 30-day membership. And get the membership. Please get the membership. For sure. We're going to save easily over probably $1,500, mm-hmm. you know, just in the last in year. half of the year. You know, it's crazy how much money we're saving. You know, I actually got my last order right here. Just got it. Oh, sweet. Today. And so I got our, we got some broth. We got our liquid detergent. 
And this is, you know, again, without any mm-hmm. kind of nefarious substances in your detergent. Uh, we've got the, my favorite coconut oil. We've got dishwashing liquid, ancient grain, uh, granola, non-GMO, gluten-free granola for yeah. the kids, that kind of stuff. A bunch of other things. And we saved 40 bucks. Look at that. See? Yes. So I love it. Take Tell advantage. Tell the other perk about how not only are you helping yourself, but how you help somebody yeah, else. Yeah, every membership, every paid membership, they give a free membership to a family in need, a low-income family, veteran, or a teacher. Mm -hmm. And so they're Mm -hmm. paying it forward. Please make sure to invest in your own health and invest in helping our culture to really make a a difference because when it boils down to it, it's about access, you know, and having the opportunity to get healthier options at lower prices can really be game-changing. So head over there, check them out, thrivemarket.com forward slash model health. Save 25 to 50% off your favorite organic non-GMO, paleo, vegan, whatever, whatever it is, items, for, yeah. do this for yourself. And I promise you, it's just going to put a lot more health and happiness in your body and a lot more money in your pocket. Right. And on that note, let's we get to the iTunes that. review of the week. All right, let's see. How about this one? It says, thank you by Gorilla Wolf. <laughs> I'm not sure where my continuous knowledge absorption will lead my current health as I apply and deny particular pieces, but I will say thank you for stepping out and taking a stand to provide all that you do. I considered myself on the fitness end of the marker when referencing the sickness to fitness model of CrossFit and if somewhere along the way dropped off to the sickness end of the spectrum with many life changes. It's humbling to say the least, but I'm so grateful to have this time and to have individuals such as yourself that are continuing to light the fire within me to get it under control, not only for myself, but for my family. Awesome. That just made my whole month. Thank you so much for leaving that review. And everybody, thank you for leaving these reviews for us over on iTunes. Truly, truly appreciate it. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Make sure you're subscribed to the show on iTunes, Stitcher. We're on Spotify now. So hop over there and check out your favorite playlist and subscribe to the Model Health Show there as well. And on that note, let's get to our topic of the day and our special guest. Our guest today is the one and only Dr. Michael Royzen. MD. And he's a board certified anesthesiologist and internist and served as the chief wellness officer at the Cleveland Clinic, which is where he is right now doing his thing. And and he was actually awarded an Emmy, an L, and the Paul G. Rogers Best Medical Communicator Award from the National Library of Medicine. And became famous for changing the way Americans think about aging by developing the real age concept. And website, which over 66 million people have taken the real age test. And he's also the co-author of seven New York Times bestsellers with his friend, uh, Dr. Oz, and four number ones, four number ones, including you, the owner's manual, which I didn't tell him this is a personal favorite of mine. This was the first time I learned about like leptin was from these guys listening to an audio book. I think it might be even like 10 years ago. So I'm very, very excited to welcome to the Model Health Show. Dr. Michael Royzen. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Sean, it's wonderful. And thank you for inviting me. And yes, it, if you read the original You, the Owner's Manual, when it first came out, it's 12 years ago now. Oh, sweet. See, that dates me a little bit. Yeah. How long I've been in the game. Yeah. But yeah. I, speaking of which, I want to talk you about... Read that, you read that in high school, though. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, exactly. I was just turning 16, you know, getting my driver's <laughs> license. But I would love to know a little and, bit. And you probably went to chapter seven first. I did. How did you know that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you must have that ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would love to talk a little bit about your origin story. You know, what got you interested in health and medicine in the first place? You know, this is, this is a plain story. I was sicker than a dog when I was about nine years old. And I had a strep throat. And I didn't, you know, you didn't know it at the time, of course. But I had a strep throat, nine years old, sicker than a dog, throwing up, doing everything bad. And a pediatrician came to our house, gave me a shot, um, and made me feel well. Mm. Um, a day later, I was back to normal. And I said, isn't that amazing? The guy came there and, did, and made me feel healthy. Not in business, not, you know, he collected some money for it. And I said, isn't that, you can do good and feel, and make people feel good. That's what I want to do in life. And so, simple story, but that's, since then I wanted to be a physician. 
I love that. That's Fantastic. that superhero right. origin story. Right. That one interaction, that one experience of somebody uh, expressing that care and that service. That's so powerful. Well, you've got all of these New York Times bestselling books that really focus a little bit more on on physical health and on and, um, mental health as well. But your latest book, Age Proof, is a little bit different from your previous books. But it's focusing on financial wellness as well. So what inspired you to do a book like this? Well, this is a, a interesting story. So I was auditioning with Gene Chatsky and a number of other people, Endemol, you know, which did The Biggest Loser and a number of other reality TV shows, um, invited a number of us to, uh, if you will, do a pilot for a show called The Experts. There was a fashion expert and a legal expert that was a judge, etc. all from around the country. We all got in L.A. for a couple weekends and did the pilot. And then no one picked up the show. But <laughs> it was a failure. But Gene Chatsky, who was the financial editor of Today, the Today Show, and she taught me so much about finance. I learned so much about finance and she learned so much about health during the pilot. She called me about two weeks later after we got our rejection notices. No one picked up the show and said, uh, look, I learned so much. Let's write a book together because what you were saying about health and what I know about finance, they're the same behaviors that change both. And they fit together. Let's do a book. And so she's the real person who had the idea of doing the book. Ooh. And so and she's the co-author. Okay. And right. And by the way, it's the eighth bestseller. So it made the bestseller list. Boom. All right. I love that. Yes. yes. <laughs> love it. Love it. And so one of the tenets here in the book, you talk about the fact that, you know, a growing concern today is people are living longer, which you think, oh, that's kind of good. <laughs> right. But the reality is, We've set up our structures in, in culture that we're saving cer- for a certain amount of time for retirement, but people are outliving oh, got it. their mm-hmm. potential earnings, mm-hmm. right? And so that's one of the tenets here in the book and how it initially ties to health. But what are some of the other ways that our financial fitness impacts our health? Well, well just so, you, so people get the feeling, you know, if you say if you were born in this year, what's the chance? How long is your life expectancy? Do you know the answer, Sean? How long would you expect, if you had a child this year, how long would they expect to live if they were a typical American? Got it. Average American. I got it. First one I got to say is, it's already been been said, the first person who's going to live to 160 is probably born already. Mm -hmm. But as far as average, maybe we're looking at uh, somewhere in the mid-90s? It's 103 is the official. And and that's without that's without many of the improvements we expect that we talked a little bit about in the book, and so in fact you may the average age may be 120, which means you have to save an awful lot of money or or figure out how to <laughs> how to make it financially viable. So the behaviors you 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 can't defeat your choices with willpower. Willpower isn't good enough, so you have to do make it automatic automatically save money first, put it into your 401k, automatically have three or four things you love for breakfast and love for lunch, go to Thrive Markets, if you will, to get them, but three or four things to love for breakfast and love for lunch, um, and choose from those three or four every day so you don't have to think about it. So doing things automatically is the only way to defeat your reptilian brain because we were born to splurge. That is, over the 10,000 years or so humans have existed, our evolution made it such that, you know, surviving the day meant something. It's only in the last 150 years that we've had a life expectancy more than 27 years. So it was, you know, the woolly mammoth coming to your cave mouth and him either eating you or you knocking him out and eating him. So splurging for the day meant something. And so we were we were we have gauged both in money and in food choices to splurge. Wrong thing for us living more than 27 years. Oh, man, that starts to kind of open up that pathway in our thinking, because some of these things you brought to the light. I didn't even consider, you know, I love this little uh, section here in the book where you talk about on the surface, you can see some quick similarities between health and wealth. We count our pennies and our calories. 
right? Those are two things that we count. We're tempted by things we want but don't need, right? So like red pumps (laughs) or red velvet cupcakes. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We often try quick fixes, i.e. condo in Florida investments or (laughs) liquid-only diets. And we sometimes avoid what we know is the right thing to do by either splurging instead of saving or on the other side, choosing the fries instead of the fruit. You know, and so these are all things that I love that we count our calories and we count our pennies and just bringing it back to point, which is our financial wellness really does equate. And, and here's another thing is that, and I love that you talk about this in the book, chronic diseases. We're talking about 84% of all healthcare spending today. So that aspect, can you talk a little bit about that? Right. So, so it used to be that we would spend more than 50% of the total healthcare expenditure in our last year of life. We now spend only 15%, and it isn't one 5%, and it isn't because we're cheap on our last year of life, we're spending just as much, but it's we're spending so much because of chronic disease to get to that last year. And the interesting thing is if you do six habits, which we talk about in the, in the book, um, and, and I'll go through them, they're simple. You do these six things and get your immunizations up to date. So it's really seven. If you do those six things plus immunizations, you reduce the chance of your having chronic disease compared to the typical American by 80 to 90%. So you really can outlive those. And, and, and as we say, it's, it, can you have health without wealth? Maybe when you're young. But not as you get older, you need the money to treat other things, routine pills, et cetera. Can you, can you have um, wealth without health? It's not likely because you're going to spend it all, if, if you will, if you're not healthy. So using those things to get healthy are really key and to get to and stay healthy. Got it. Got it. And in the book, you talk about the importance of both body checks and fiscal physicals. So let's talk right. about why these matter and a couple of key points for each. So one of them, I mean, if, if you will, from a physical standpoint, PHY, um, instead of fiscal, but PH physical standpoint, it is in fact that you should know what your waist size is. It should be less than half your height. So the most important measurement you can make is put a tape measure around your belly button. I know that you could do it right now. Put it around your belly button. Suck in because you will anyway. And that (laughs) number in inches should be less than half your height. So if you're, I don't know, if you're six feet tall, six times 12 is 72. So your waist size, when you put it around your belly button, should be half of that or 36 inches or less. So most important is tape. Second most important, and many people ignore this, is your blood pressure. And they're they're free devices at drugstores, et cetera. So tape measure doesn't cost hardly anything. That doesn't. Then you can do some tests like how many push-ups can you do before you in a minute before you have to give up? How many sit-ups can you do? There are all kinds of simple tests you can do for yourself to gauge your health and that are really important in gauging how long and how well you're going to live. But those first two, the tape measure test, why? Because belly fat is metabolically active. It isn't inert. It's not just a storage piece of fat like uh, um, you might have on a hip. On your hip, fat on the hip, that's storage, not active but fat in your waist, and that causes inflammation in the rest of your body. Um, On the other hand, the blood pressure, that determines how likely you are to have a heart attack or stroke or memory loss. Very important things to avoid. Got it. it, How frequently should we be checking those things? Well, if they're normal, meaning your waist size is normal, under half your height and isn't close, you can do it once a year. Um, blood pressure, we say check it once a month, even if it's normal. And that starts at age about 20. So once a month all the time, because it, it'll sneak up occasionally. And you need to be alert to it. That's especially if you've got a family history of high blood pressure or you are got a, a big waist size. Yeah, I love that. You know, and this is another point that I really uh, connect with you on is the fact that you 
are promoting something very real, which is to ch the waste management is the most important, not weight management. And you specifically talk about that in the book. And I think that really, you know, people get really caught up in that scale when in fact we need to be monitoring our waste, what's happening with that measurement. And so from, from that, let's shift gears and talk a little bit about the fiscal physical. Like what are some of the things we should be checking into? Well, there really are three basic ones. How much you earn, how much you owe, how much you own. Um, so those are the three that are the basic ones. And the key is you want to, I mean, there, there are five fiscal habits that we'll get into, um, I hope. But, yeah. but in any case, if you, what you want to do is make sure you earn enough to save enough for your retirement. You want to make sure that you own more than you owe and that you those are the, the the characteristics that you want to follow you want your what you owe to go down as you get older you want what you own to go up both savings accounts etc and you hope that what you earn goes up over time yes and this would seem really kind of like captain obvious but we need these five fiscal habits so can you talk about those to actually how do we execute on that Right. So the first is you've got to earn a decent enough living. And it's not like you can go in the boss to your boss and say, I want double my salary today. So you've got to you've got to have a value and pick a job and a passion that both you like and can earn enough. And if you and, you know, people find things that as long as you're passionate about something and love doing it, you will find a way usually to earn more doing it, whether it is owning a company. You know, if you love cleaning kitchens, you'll own a company that ends up cleaning kitchens rather than just be the person cleaning kitchens. And you may find an automatic or robot that can do it with you or something like that. But you'll find some way of making it valuable enough. So and if not, you go back to school and you study so you get to the place you want to be. Um, the second one, and I'm trying to get at it, is to pay yourself first. That is, um, automatically put enough money into one emergency savings, and once you've got that, into a designated savings account and into retirement account. So we were always taught pay yourself first. That means take 15% off the top. Don't have it to try and save it for the end of the month, and then you're going to put it in the account. Uh -huh put it in right away off the top so you don't even see it. And that way you'll have enough money because it accumulates and it compounds over time. Um, the third habit is always, and, and this one fits with number two, is spend less than you make. If you spend less than you make, and a lot of that, you know, we spend a lot on housing, we spend a lot on cars now. What you've got to do is adjust your lifestyle so that you're always and we, it's not that we don't want you to use and enjoy life. We want you to enjoy it and you'll enjoy it much more if you spend less than you earn. Um, the fourth thing is protect yourself. That Hold on, is Dr. Dr. Royzen, we got it. Before you get to that one, I got to talk about this one, because, again, it seems like Captain Obvious. How do we not do that? You got to talk about credit a little a, a little bit right quick. Well, what you've got to do is is develop a plan. And none of us, you know, we nobody wants to develop a budget. You don't want to develop a budget for calories. You don't want to develop a budget for your expenses. But you have to do it. There are and it's very few of us who earn enough money that we don't have to worry about a budget. You know, Sheryl Sandberg can do that and um you know, Bill Gates can do that, but most of the rest of us actually have to have a budget where you say, I'm going to spend X amount of money and you, you make sure you live within that budget. And unfortunately, you got to do it that way. And you have to. The other point that we'll get to is one of the most important things is have a financial buddy. And whether that is your spouse or a friend, you've got to say, OK, Although this is private, my finances are private, private doesn't mean solo. I need someone to help me. And whether that's you use a budget on the Internet or you use a budget, Gene Chatsky has a whole bunch of 
websites that are free to use where you can do budgeting on it. And in fact, we've got a bunch of tables in the book and charts in the book so you can do that as well. But it is you want to have a budget so that you allocate enough money to what you want it to, to your priorities. And then make sure you, you and if you're not, then you got to say, OK, I got to earn more money and I need to go back to number one. And how do I earn more money? Okay. And whether that's participating in the gig economy or whatever you want to do to earn more money, you know, um, there are a lot of jobs, extra jobs you can take in, in spare time. And by doing those extra jobs, you don't have time to spend it as well. I'm just so glad that you brought up that point, because there there are some times where we're thinking, well, these are necessities, you know, education, um, like you mentioned, housing, even and just the basics. Sometimes those are more than what we earn. But then you're like, go back to square one, figure out, well, then how can you earn more? If these are priorities and you want to keep them in your life, then that's where you'll have to make the adjustment within the five principles. Yeah, that's exactly I love right, that. Jade. Thank you. So let's move on to the next one that I uh, stopped you on. Um, the four. the one I think you stopped me on was um, mm -hmm. the uh, protect your financial life, and what we mean by that is the largest ca cause of bankruptcy is quite question, well, Jade. What's the largest cause of bankruptcy? Debt. Go ahead. We owe too much. Yeah. And what's the largest cause of debt that we owe too much that causes financial problems? Healthcare. Healthcare. Yeah, it's it's medical expenses. It's sudden <laughs> medical <there>. expenses <laughs> are the largest cause of bankruptcy in America. So you've got to have a health insurance <laughs> policy. So okay. although you know when you're young you think you're and I did too think we're invincible, we aren't. Sure. And you know someone could come in whether you're walking to work or riding a bike or crossing the street. Somebody without insurance can come and, and strike you down. You need to have those basic insurance things, health insurance, disability insurance, life insurance. Um, and those are the basics you got to have to protect yourself, but especially health insurance when you're young because of this, that sudden expense. Even if it's only, you know, the, what we call catastrophic insurance, doesn't pay for routine, but only pays if you're really, really sick. You got to do that. And the basics of that, too, is you have a emergency savings account. So the first thing you fill out in that paying yourself first is you get up to uh, saving emergency so that you have two thousand dollars or whatever you decide you need in an emergency account in case the car breaks down or something else. I've got to mention this one. This is something this I have this, but I use it for whether it's uh, an emergency or we just need a lump sum of money mm -hmm. for, for whatever the case, whatever the event might might pose. And I've, it's, I have that automatically taken out every single go. week. Yep. I actually picked a week. You pick per month. And so I don't see it. Like mm -hmm. it just comes right out of the account and it goes into that account and it gets filled mm -hmm. so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you look back and you see like three, four, five, 12 months later and you're just like, wow, that's amazing. Sure. And so you have that little buffer. You have a psychological buffer like, if something happens, we've got the money. It's because that's another thing that stresses us. And it's a subconscious thing that if something does happen, a car issue, uh, something with a family member, are we going to have, how, how are we going to make it work, mm -hmm. right? Especially when it happens and then you don't have the money and you've got to go into hyper stress mode, sure. it can be really tough. And so uh, I, I cheated a little earlier and, and whispered the word over to you. <laughs> it's okay. So, we did the family know. feud kind. And also, right, right. <laughs> we're a team, baby. And, we're and a also, team. we've got a better relationship with the B word now. Budget, uh -huh. budget. We can budge. And so, what's the fifth? The what's the fifth fiscal habit? And the fifth one is find the passion that you want to, if you will, give to, and whether that's a charity or whatever you want to do, whether it's time you give to the food bank, whether it is time you give to the SPCA, whether it's time you give to an aging parent, um, but it is how do you want to give back? And, and you want to figure out what you want to do, what your passion is in this way so that you can do it. It may be you want to, you know, it may be you want to give to um, kids basketball, or it may be you want to teach um, old people how to read, uh, mm -hmm you know, Spanish or something, yeah. but it is, how do you want to give back? Ah, I love that. Love yeah. that. And it's all tied in. It's layered. First of all, I got to say this. 
your writing style, I, I can hear your voice in I here. Just love it. He's so funny on the low, guys. <laughs> like, there's so many amazing, like, it's just, it's really a great read. Yeah. Super easy to read because some of the information can be, you know, when we're talking about medical type information, can mm-hmm. be a little bit um, dry. Deep. Yeah, it can be dry. <laughs> Thank you. You said it. I was gonna say like you might need to put some coconut oil oh, like on your on your ears and uh-huh. ears if you listen to an audiobook or whatever. But yes, it could be kind of dry and he makes it fun and, and definitely makes this information very palatable and uh, easy to assimilate. And so uh, I, I should tell you that, that it was Lisa Oz, Mehmet's wife, who taught us how to do this, both Mehmet and I, because we were writing the books and she said, You gotta make these fun. And so we, as you know, in the all the U books, we have cartoons in them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we write each book three times. The first one is to get the science right. The second time we go through is to get analogies. So what makes sense in in terms of that people will relate to? Um, so you can talk about, um, you know, if you're if you're trying to lose weight without thinking about the culture, it's like trying to prevent lung disease without thinking about how how much pollution there is in in Beijing or in China, um, so you got to have analogies like you know like that, and then you got to make them fun because mm-hmm. if they're and so the third time we go through and the whole the whole thing that Gene and I tried to do was to make each other laugh raucously, you know, <laughs> lie down on the floor so we couldn't even write for the next half hour, but that's the whole goal is to, so to make it fun for people to read. I love that that's so huge, much. And yeah. that's just a testament to why uh, your books have been so successful. And we're going to shift gears now. We're going to talk a little bit about breaking bad behavior because when oh. it comes to money and our health, this can be a tricky territory. But we're going to take a quick break. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Massive research is now pouring in with this blossoming field of science and nutrition called nutrigenomics. And this field is studying how every single molecule of food that you eat impacts your genetic expression. So we're literally talking about how your body appears, your health, or lack thereof. All of this is going to be determined by every single molecule of food that you eat. So whether it's a banana or a donut or a hot pocket, whatever it might be, we have to be in tune with the fact that this is going to impact what genes are getting expressed. And there are genes like the FTO gene, for example, that has been found to be this, quote, fat gene and have a high propensity towards obesity if you carry this gene. Now, you can silence these genes by making sure that you're eating real foods that are in alignment with your own genetic integrity. The basis of that needs to be from earth-grown nutrients, things that your body actually recognizes as real food that you have a history with, that your ancestors have a history with, not things that have been invented in the laboratory like last week. All right, so we want to make sure that we're eating real food that are from earth-grown nutrients. And this is why I love on it so much. This is why they are family. This is why I endorse them so powerfully because they are part of my life. They're a part of my family's life. And I want to make sure that you head over to onit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash model. And you're going to get 10% off all of their health and human performance supplements. I'm a huge fan of the Hemp Force Protein. I've been using it for many years. It's one of my favorite things in the world, and I give this to my kids as well. And this is one of the things that I love to have post-workout. Now, hemp is based on some powerful uh, amino acids, some powerful protein building blocks like albumin, which is a very soft globular protein that's very easy to digest, plus edestin. And this is a unique protein compound that's found in hemp that might be the most bioavailable, usable protein for the human body. Crazy, right? So a lot of people today are hearing about the benefits of hemp, hemp seeds and hemp protein and, and hemp oil, things like that. But we want to make sure, again, that you're getting organic and that it's made with integrity, right? So that this cold process, so that you're actually able to get the nutrients that you're looking for in this kind of protein powder, protein cake that you're getting with Hemp Force Protein from on it. So they've got multiple flavors. They've got the Chaco Maca. They've got the Vanilla Acai. And they also have a brand new recovery protein that adds in the powerful component of colostrum, which has every single amino acid, every polysaccharide, aka essential sugar, and every essential fatty acid right there in it. These powerful building blocks, growth factors, every growth factor that influences your body's metabolism is there in that protein, uh, the recovery protein. So make sure that you're checking that out as well. Super powerful stuff. Also has immune factors to help 
uh, fortify your immune system. Just great stuff. And they've got exercise equipment, tons of great foods. Head over, check them out today. Onnit.com forward slash model. O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash M-O-D-E-L for 10% off. Now back to the show. Okay, we are back and we're talking with the one and only Dr. Michael Roizen. And we were just going to dive in and talk about breaking bad behavior. And this is one of my favorite sections in the book. And in it, you say that changing your daily deeds isn't a matter of will, but a matter of re-engineering. Can you share what you mean by that specifically and some practical tips that we can utilize to make some changes in our habits? Well, let me give you an easy one. If you buy a, a box of cookies or a bag of cookies and they're in, in your home, they will look lonesome and you will eat them. I mean, there is no way that you can use willpower to defeat those cookies if you like those cookies. Right. And so the engineering part is don't ever get them in your home because once they're in your home, they will get you. Um, and so the point is that you need to, you can't defeat your reptilian brain. Our brain, our bottom of our brain, that, that survival to live is so strong that it will defeat any willpower. You just can't do it with willpower. So you've got to re-engineer your life and both your food and your finances need to be engineered so that it's easy for you to live without having to use willpower. Uh, I yes. so need that on a shirt today. <laughs> uh, I right. love it. Just if the cookies are in the house, they're going to call your name. <laughs> they're going to call <laughs> me did directly. You, did somebody just say Sean? <laughs> right, right. So, I thought I was home by myself. Also, we, we talked about Sesame Party. Street not too long ago, but Cookie Monster. Oh, right? man. Why is Cookie Monster? Well, hey, you know, put, it, put it together. That's his reptilian. That's that. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing I learned. From first time I heard it from you before I dove into the research, ghrelin. Yep. Right? Right. That right. hunger hormone. Mm-hmm. Ghrelin is a gremlin. Ghrelin, ghrelin, ghrelin. Causes, you, causes you to eat. Yeah. So what when your stomach is rumbling, it's really your stomach releasing ghrelin, and that tells your brain, eat, eat, eat. <laughs> <coughs> and leptin is the opposition to ghrelin, but ghrelin there, there are ways of defeating ghrelin. So, in fact, if you have some nuts, the fat in the nuts suppresses your ghrelin secretion. Mm-hmm. It's another way of doing something automatic so that it suppresses your need for willpower. You don't want to have to have willpower. You don't want to fight off the ghrelin to stay thin or to not eat something. You want to have a little fat in your diet with some protein that's nuts or pumpkin seeds or something like that, and those stop you from eating too much. Mm, I love that. So little good. practical yeah. tip there. Yeah. And let's talk about some practical tips for changing our habits. Like, what can we do to actually go for, well, one of them you already mentioned, which is having the, the almonds in your cupboard instead of the uh, Doritos, right? Go. So that's one change. But what are some other Doritos practical too. changes we can make for our habits? <laughs> well, your body, your brain wants to be busy. So your brain sets up pathways of use. Let me give you the example. If you've ever paid, played chopsticks, you know that the first time you played the piano, it was difficult. By the 65th time you played chopsticks, no one in your family wanted to even listen to it. I mean, they were tired of it. It got so automatic, right? But you developed a pathway. If you then go down to the piano, and hit the first key, you're going to play chopsticks. So the only way to break those pathways is to develop a new pathway. So you can't break an old habit by just willpower or trying to break it. You've got to establish another habit. So, for example, instead of playing the chopsticks, you automatically sit down and play some other song. You learn another tune and you automatically go to that second tune is the only way you're going to stop from playing chopsticks every time you sit down at the piano. Same thing with with food or driving or anything else or with the habit of smoking. You can't break smoking just with willpower and a going cold turkey is very tough. So you've got to establish another habit like instead of after dinner, I'm going to smoke a cigarette after dinner, I'm going to take a walk. And that walk is the new habit 
So you get up from dinner, you take a walk. That's the new habit that you ingrain in your brain cycle, your brain pathway, so you always do it. Yes, because our brains are always looking for patterns. It's always trying to link up and create these neural associations to things. And it's even outside the paradigm of food and even smoking. This is something I talked about in Sleep Smarter. And when I was on your show, uh, we talked a little bit about this. But one of the habits that we have now in our modern culture is being on our, on our devices late at night. And, you know, Harvard researchers have confirmed that the blue light suppresses your melatonin for basically every hour you're on your device is suppressing melatonin for about 30 minutes. And then cortisol is getting elevated. It basically, it's just kicking your sleep right in the crotch. All right. Now, what is the solution here? Should we just get off our, your device, you know, 30 minutes before bed, an hour before bed? You can't do that. No, You'll start to like... get the Internet jitters. <laughs> right. You'll be sitting up there like tweaking out. Yeah. And just like, let me just check one tweet, right? One right? Just one tweet. <laughs> and it will start to see how you are actually addicted. And it's because of, you know, just really quickly for everybody, there's this dopamine response when we're seeking and looking for things on the internet. And it's a natural thing for humans. Like we want to look, it, it drives us to seek and to grow and to look for things. And the internet's perfect for that because you always find something. And then you get the little opioid head and you create this vicious circle. So the bottom line is this. He's, he just mentioned it. We have to change the behavior we have to change and implement something else we can't just sit there and do nothing so what i recommend not just even changing the be the behavior adding something in but something that you like okay right and he right. talks he highlights this as well but if for example being on the phone at night how about we replace that with a really great uh conversation with your significant other you know or uh reading a book that you really have been excited about reading or uh, sex even. Uh, hello. Works, Hopefully yeah. that's more exciting <laughs> than Instagram. But if not, I don't know. We can help with that's, that. That's that's yeah. a oh, what? Okay. Well, we've got and a we got episodes. episodes. We got episodes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. You <laughs> got to clarify. Yeah. Uh, there's only clarify. so much I can do. And, 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 and Sean, there's actually another thing you can do, is most of the phones now have a red wavelength switch. Yeah. So if you go on your in the settings, you can go to the red wavelength, right, and turn it to a red wavelength. So if you just happen to go to that phone. But I, I like the idea of sex instead of the phone. <laughs> I'm saying, there That's you right. go. That's right. And so on the iPhone, we've got, what he's talking about, we've got Night Shift. Mm -hmm. It's a tool right mm -hmm. there on the phone built in to Apple's devices. Yep, yep. For Android, you guys can check out Twilight. Is an app you can put on there for your desktop, laptops, Flux, F.L.U.X. That pulls out the most troublesome spectrum of light, just in case. I mean... Ideally, you want to give yourself a little bit of a screen curfew, but, you know, real life is going to happen and we're going to do stuff. And so just to shift gears here again, I want to talk <laughs> about the science of stress. And this was such I think this is like. For me, this was one of the biggest affirmations in reading the book and why all of this matters and how it all comes together. But first of all, can you talk a little bit about the number one stressor of modern man? What is it today? Sure. Sure. Of the major stresses, there are 13 major life stresses, eight of them are financial. Wow. That is, you have to move, um, you get sued, you get a new job. I mean, all of these things are financial, if you will, and eight of the 13 are financial. So that key of putting the money away, having that little pile of money, takes away 80% of the stress you have. Um, you'll still have to take a move. You'll still have someone who fires you, you'll still have to um, have a mortgage. You know, these these big life events. When you get married, believe it or not, it's the financial stress that bothers most people rather than the relationship stress. They're comfortable with the relationship by the time they get married. It's they don't understand the finances of marriage. So it is financial, in fact. And um, the difference is we've learned throughout recent history, if you will, to meditate, to do deep breathing, to do yoga, to do other things for what we call relationship stress or the everyday stresses. Someone cuts you off, but that doesn't work with financial stress. Financial stress, you have to actually deal with head on. How do you budget for it? How do you pay it off? How do you pay down the credit card? Those things. So it's a different thing. You've got to face financial stress head on, relationship stress, if you will, event stress, those you can meditate and breathe away. Yes, I love that because that's something that, you know, today, and I think that it's a little bit misconstrued, and we've had amazing people on the show like 
Bob Proctor talking about these subject matters. But we're just sitting there. You know, you're you've got ten thousand dollars in debt that you've accumulated by some random thing, and then we, you know, have this idea like I could just meditate on the money. You know, <laughs> but you can't meditate out of the debt. However, this can relax your nervous system. You know, get more into the parasympathetic, so you can maybe think more clearly, be more creative. Mm -hmm. And even and we've talked about quantum physics recently on the show as well. You do you do create change in the world around you, like down to the photons. Right. But the reality is we really have to be proactive with this. This is something and it can go both ways. You know, as you're moving towards taking action, it's going to help to reduce that stress. And all around life is just going to feel a lot better. So I'm glad you brought that up, because what you mentioned in the book is that our our great and valuable stress reduction modalities today are sort of like a flight from the financial stress, right? You're kind of running away from it and not deal, dealing with it in a way. Uh, but again, these they're still valuable, incredibly valuable mm -hmm. for so many things in our lives. We have to couple that with the action. So, Listen. and in fact, the, the we go through the actions of how to pay down debt. Um, and so obviously uh, you've probably had experts on this as well, but you take the, the ones with the largest interest rate first and you pay it down in steps and you make sure you do it in a systematic fashion. I mean, I love some of the, the stories that Gene was able to tell of uh, the two sisters who paid down. I think they, they got out of $150,000 worth of student debt over a two-year period by being buddied each other and just paying it down. That's it's absurd, right? That's it's absurd and beautiful at the same time. How crazy is it, you know, just the way the system is set up with student loans? It's like the biggest thing right, right now. And, right. Uh, but the thing is, again, being more empowered in, in all these things and being aware as you're moving forward. So now I want to actually talk a little bit about how does stress actually affect our bodies? So what happens when you're stressed is you release hormones from your brain that work on the top of your adrenal gland, what's called both the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla. There are two adrenal glands. The cortex puts out cortisol. The medulla is bathed by the cortex and puts out more epinephrine and norepinephrine, adrenaline and noradrenaline. And those things raise your blood pressure, raise your blood sugar. That was very logical for the prior 10,000 years okay. when our response to the stress to that woolly mammoth coming to the cave mouth was you either had to punch him in the nose before he punched you in the nose or you had to run away. And the cortisol gave you enough glucose to activate and to make you more alert. And the norepinephrine and epinephrine caused your heart rate and blood pressure to go up so you could get the stuff into your muscles and really run away and run faster. Um, that doesn't work anymore. You know, when your boss comes in and gives you another thing to do at 445 in the afternoon, punching him in the nose is not the right technique or even running away from him doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do now is, and by the way, if those things, if you don't use them to activate your muscles, they raise your blood sugar and you then accumulate fat in your belly and you decrease and the cortisol decreases the brain connections, decreases your um, protein and muscles, causes the full problem. So what you want to do is, in fact, um, use that, meditate that away so you don't have that acute event stress or relationship stress or deep breathe through it or do guided imagery. There are eight techniques um, that, as you said, you've had great experts on, but there are eight different techniques we can deal with that to get over the temporary moment and then deal with the long term problem. But it is, you know, when in, instead of uh, someone, you know, when someone cuts me off on the road, I immediately I have an automatic response and I've learned it. You put your finger on your belly button and you take a breath in and watch, feel your belly button go out and in. Normally, if it's if it's in while well, I'm in an office or something, I can close my eyes. You don't want to do that while you're driving, obviously, mm -hmm. if someone cuts you off. But other than that, um, that's how how you you deal with it, because you've got to suppress the cortisol and suppress the norepinephrine and epinephrine from causing you to gain weight and causing you to lose muscle and brain mass. I love that little tip there. Uh, when you said when somebody cut you off in traffic and you said, 
And then you take your finger. And I was like, put it out the window? What are you going to do, Dr. Royzen? Slow down. But, um, yeah, it goes on your belly button. I love that. Just having that automated response, right, you know, right. if you train yourself. So I think that would be helpful on both sides because you know when folks are really upset, the yeah. road rage is coming. And I try hard not to look because I already know that I will see the finger if I look over there. <laughs> but maybe, you know, on my end uh, of it, if I were the innocent party, mm-hmm. to use that technique to not let that stress me going forward after someone else has had their rough rough day. Uh, yeah, and, the, and, and the other thing <laughs> is to empathize with them. Yeah. So if they're cutting you off, it's they have to get someone. I always think if it's a yeah. guy, I think he's Russian because his wife was either in an auto accident or is having a baby. And if it's a woman, I think, you know, she's trying to save her husband who got run over in an auto, you know, <laughs> while he's riding a bike, car ran him over. So I try and put the worst medical problem that yeah, they're I having. Yeah, I see. Right. How about that? So <laughs> I'm trying to empathize with yeah, them. Yeah. yeah, I've done the same thing. I mm-hmm. think, you know, they're uh, getting to their kids' recital or whatever. You know, I've done the same thing. It's so interesting that we all, we never talked about <laughs> I this. I say child care because I'm like, they're charging by the minute. Yeah, oh, I bet you know about that too. <laughs> so now, up. also you mentioned how stress gets lumped together as something we want to avoid, but not all stress is the same and not all stress is even bad for you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the only time we're not stressed is when we're six feet under right right so just living your stre- you, that is you have a a change in your environment a change in what you're doing and that makes you more productive so up to a limit stress is makes you more productive makes you happier is good for you it's only when you go over the edge and so in fact it is figuring out where you are in your total pathway <laughs> I'm just you have really helped like every area of my life here in this conversation. So I'm so thrilled to be talking with you and, and hearing these things. What are some things that we can do to better address the stressors that we do have in life? So one is the financial stressors is is have a savings account, deal with it and pay down debt for the for the relationship stress. You know, it is find a technique. And we have a we have a free app on uh, the iPhone, and it's also on Android called Stress Free Now. It's the meditations. So practice the meditation, or practice deep breathing, or practice guided imagery, or practice some other technique. Progressive muscle relaxation. You scrunch up your face, and then you gradually release it. But it is whatever you want to do, whatever works for you. You want to practice it. And do it as a regular thing. Got it. I want to implant something right here. A debt repayment program. You know, there are programs out there that they can consolidate and put things together. And that's actually somebody really close to me did this not too long ago. And it was pretty game changing for them because the reality is, and this is going back to Bob Proctor, which we'll put that episode in the show notes. Legend, legend. But he talks about especially how the human mind works. We don't want to focus on the debt. You want to focus on making money. So if you can put something on automatic where the debt's just getting taken care of and then just focus on making money, it kind of frees up your thinking. It it takes away stress because part of the stress is just focusing on the debt. There's debt, there's debt, there's debt. And the universe (laughs) responding accordingly is like, you have debt, you have debt, you have debt. And so we can kind of shift gears, especially, but there are some people that operate great with that. Like they want to focus on that and just kind of chip away at that thing. But a lot of us, we'd rather focus on the more positive aspect, you know, the accumulation of money and just, but again, you have to do something. And he just talked about it, set up a a payment program and and get that stuff paid down. So it's not in the front of your, of your mind's eye. Now, last thing I want to cover, and this is so, just love this and being able to tie these things together for people and get some real tangible, actionable things we can start to, to look towards I like to talk about the science of working. Now, why is it that, how does this even connect with the work that we do and our health? Well, you're spending a third or a fourth of your life at at work. And so what you want to do is use all the assets, whether it's a buddy, whether it is the work site, whether it is a work site health program. Your employer is spending a fair bit usually on your medical insurance. Um, and if they aren't, you, you're going to have to do that. And use work 
whether it is the retirement program or the automatic deposit program or the insurance, the life insurance and health insurance program, use those programs to both accumulate financial assets and to help you stay vigorous and well. Use the buddies you have at work. Use the friends you have at work um, and use the resources. Every work site has some physical capabilities. Learn to park a little further from your office. Walk a little extra in the morning and the evening. Or take a get off the subway an extra block early or block late. Um, or the uh, the train. You can do the same, the same thing, um, but find a buddy to be your buddy, your partner, and help you um, live healthier. Instead of having, you know, candy on the, on the bowl, find a dark chocolate or find walnuts or, or do something else that little things at work to make you healthy. Instead of emailing someone, go and walk to their desk, do some walking meetings. So I never, you know, any meeting that I have that's one-on-one, -on -one, I try and have it as a walking meeting where the two of us walk. And that actually, you, you find if you're in better shape, Sean, you, you look like you're in great shape. So if you did a walking meeting, you could pick up the pace and you gain a negotiating advantage over who <laughs> you're trying to negotiate with. Right, right. Um, go I ahead. Sorry, love Jade. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with you. But what I saw there, too, was that having that activity together, then you create a a bond and an energy that would work toward a, could work toward a positive outcome there, too, business-wise. Yeah. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And I've seen this firsthand and uh, something that we employ, even as we're in the studio right now, I was standing for, I don't <laughs> yeah. know, a couple of years. And Not then, even that long. And then okay, now maybe. you're right here with me, yes. you know, and we're having these, uh, we, you know, get the microphone set up so we can actually stand up and be a little bit more mobile as we're you doing. You know, I, lo I love the fact you're standing. I have a, at, at work, I bought a treadmill desk for myself. <laughs> so I have a treadmill desk and, and normally, unless I'm on the radio, or something like that. I am on the treadmill desk, so it's unusual that I'm sitting down. But that's uh, I did that from my downtown office rather than my uh, real work office. Oh, I love that. Right and that's just another option yeah. that we can employ. And so there's really two kind of big areas here with our work. And he mentioned this: the work environment itself. When we're talking about, uh, you know, a company culture where somebody's always bringing in donuts, somebody always bringing in cakes, they're always ordering uh, terrible takeout food. That being in an environment like that is definitely going to be, it's just kind of like having the stuff at home. It's going to engage that willpower a little bit more, a lot more. And so we need to be aware of that. Is that even the culture that you want to be in? And again, we have to be honest about this. Sometimes things are not viable for you to just hop out and go get a different job. I understand that. But it's about making the decision to make that happen and not settling. And that's, I think we really downplay our ability to make changes and to really take control and being more empowered in our lives because of the reasons which are valid. You know, I've got kids, I've got bills to take care of, but all of that, because we're not feeling well, yeah. we oftentimes don't take, take action to move mm -hmm. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we have, we have a potluck every now and then every Friday, every third Friday. And instead of the potluck being food that ages you, the challenge is, okay, make it with something red that makes you younger. So all food, you want a relationship with food, just like you have a relationship with your significant other. Well, food should be a relationship, meaning, and no relationship should be one way. You like it and it doesn't like your body back. So you want a food to be a relationship where it loves your body back. But every Friday when you're going to have that potluck, challenge everyone to bring in something with red in it that's healthy or with green in it that's healthy or with blue in it, that they, but it's got to taste great, obviously. But, so you want a relationship. You want to love it, but you want it to love your body back. I love that office uh, potluck, you know, and you can be the person at your job who employs that, mm -hmm. you know, but again, and influence, it's yeah. being able to, to point your locus of focus on the place that you want to be. You know, I did a talk at Google not too long ago, and they've got this, like, amazing, amazing food experience. Like, they've got this, like, super it's a they have a robot let okay, me just let me just say that there. they've got a robot yeah. guys they have a <laughs> robot but it's not like the kind of walk it's not like r2d2 R2, right? right it's a it's a <laughs> coffee C3PO, robot yeah. it's a coffee and tea robot that puts all these different superfoods in it's kind of like you tell it what you want and then it puts all these different like goji berries and yerba mate and oh, chocolate right. and 
it's really remarkable. But, you know, you, there are places like that. There are places that are paying attention to a healthier yeah. work culture as we well. Now, do you, do you remember where the um, meat station was at the Google? I do not recall. It's hidden way behind. So we engineered it um, so that it was behind everything else. And you had to be in a long line to get it. So you used your entire time, if you will, your entire just standing in line. So no one waits for meat anymore because it's in a tough place to get to and you don't even see it. I and guess it's like more like hunting. Yeah. You know, it takes a little <laughs> well, bit more time true. than the gathering. True, true. I get that. I get right, that. Well, right. and helps so with awesome. the willpower. Well, Dr. Michael <gasps> Royzen, amazing, amazing uh, insights. And I'm very, very grateful to have you on the show and to share your brilliance with everybody. And uh, everybody, I want to make sure that you pick up his book, Age Proof. I think it's a valuable and important addition to your library and something that has a lot of insights that can really be game-changing for you on multiple levels. So if you can, I've got a final question for you. I know I said the other one was a final question, but i got one final question <laughs> final, for you. Final, final. What is the model that you're here to set with the way that you're living your life personally? What's the example that you're setting with how you're living your life? Well... We live in, and I live and that's why what drives me is how to help other people get to what we call in, in the book six normals. So if you get to normal waist for height, normal blood pressure, uh, normal LDL cholesterol, et cetera, and you do that by, if you will, managing your stress, avoiding toxins, making the right food choices and the right portion size and doing routine physical activity. But if you do those things, you're going to live much with much less financial burden and you're going to live much healthier. So it is doing the I live age proof and everyone and if you can listen to this show, you can live age proof. And that's the key is how do I get to be 100 or 120 and enjoying every minute of it, enjoying the great grandkids or the, whatever you want to enjoy. But you get can do it. And that's what drives me. Yes, absolutely love it. Uh, Dr. Royzen, can you let everybody know where they can connect with you online and where they can find your book? Well, the book is every place, if you will, since it did become a New York Times bestseller, but Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble, hopefully your local bookstores. Um, and, um, of course, you can get it, you can download it at uh, Amplify, etc. But the other um, place is to connect with me. We have a radio show on iHeartRadio. You and you were on it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you, the owner's manual radio show, you can download it. And the website is ageproof.life. So instead of a dot com, you can go to ageproof.life. Gene Chatsky has a financial coaching program there if you want it. Um, but we have a lot of resources there as well. So ageproof.life. Dr. Royzen, thank you so much for coming on the thank show you. today. And thank you. You've been in my life longer than you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thank you for putting that work together because it really has made an impact. It's one of the catalysts for all of the people being here today. It, it really added to um, my perspective. So thank you so much for that. Sean and Jade, thank you. Wonderful show. Thank you. Awesome. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. I appreciate you so much for tuning in. You know, one of the big takeaways today is really looking at how stress and financial stress specifically is impacting our health and well-being. And we've talked about this on the show before, but there is such a thing as a hormetic stress, right? Mm -hmm. This is a beneficial stress, potentially beneficial, if you allow yourself to recover from it. So Stress is not all bad. We do need some stress to get us going, to uh, inspire us to take action, for our bodies to grow and adapt, for our brains to grow and adapt. There are going to be stressors along the way. But when we put ourselves in strong financial stress, it just eats us up from the inside out. So this is something to definitely take a look at and address and stop putting on the back burner. And also our mindset in looking at stress, you know, looking at that thing as like this is this daunting task that's just going to take me down Instead of like, you know what, this is an opportunity. This is a positive um, uh, experience for me to really grow myself, to really develop qualities that I need to be the successful, healthy person that I want to be. Because you're still, when you make the decision to become healthier, you're still bringing your old self with you to the party, yeah. right? You've got to change who you are from the inside out and become a better version of yourself. 
And that really takes us to change our perspective about these things. You know, even looking at exercise, <laughs> not as like, oh, this hurts. It hurts. <laughs> I hate it. Instead of like, this is a stimulation. You know, this, this feels good. This is, this is invigorating, you know. Mm -hmm. These simple switches in your psychology. And the thing is like, well, Sean, I'd be lying to myself then <laughs> and they say that it feels good. But it's kind of, it's the, a little bit of that, I, the fake it till you make it terminology. But we get to choose the language that we use within our own minds and how we label things. You know, it's really important to take more control over that because a lot of these negative things are just humming along in the background and causing you a lot of additional stress when you can change the way that you look at stress, that it's making you better, that it's making you stronger, and it's making you more fit to be the person that you truly want to be. So I want to thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I appreciate you immensely. We've got some amazing, amazing guests and show topics coming up, so make sure to stay wow. tuned. Take care. Have an amazing day, and I'll talk with you soon.